Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Fueled by Insanity. Now, the last place we left off was uh, we we're still talking to Kaijoro, and we, he answered a bunch of our questions, and it still led to more questions. Uh, I don't trust this dude. I really, really don't. And uh, we will see what he is up to later, I suppose. It can't be anything good now, can it? But anyway, guys, let's hop right into it. All right. Perhaps once we've grown to know each other better, I may divulge more information to you. For now, though, I have an idea. Oh, background change. What, did you just change my dream? In a sense, yes. It is still your dream and is created by your own mind. I only brought it forth. It's beautiful. I had a feeling you might enjoy this place. I love snow. It's too bad we hardly ever get any in Samwood. I want to play in it. I drew a smile, seemingly pleased with my reaction. Maybe I am too easy to please, but... Fuck it, this is my dream and I want to have fun. I'll worry about all those questions and stuff later. For now, I'm going to play in the snow and make the best snow fox ever. Ugh, morning. I was having such a good dream, too. I guess I should wake up. I slowly open my eyes to find the light still off, though the sun is shining in from behind the partition. Leave it to Darren to use an old partition instead of curtains. <laughs> I continue lying in bed, too lazy to want to get up just yet. I swear, I feel something familiar, and it takes a while before I fully realize. I tug on my tail, only to find out that it won't budge. Ted's holding my tail again, isn't he? I look over my shoulder and see him asleep, my tail in his arms with his head resting against it. I'm tempted to leave him alone and let him continue sleeping, but at the same time, I'd like to get up. He stayed up later than me, so there's no telling how long it'll take until he wakes up. Psst. Ted. No response. A silly idea pops into my head as I gaze at him sleeping peacefully. Hmm. I wonder. I grab hold of his left ear and hold it down, only to let go and watch it spring back into its usual. <laughs> oh my god, dude, really? <laughs> I repeat the action, laughing quietly to myself as I do. I think that dream about playing in the snow must have put me in a silly mood, because right now, this seems like peak entertainment. I mess with his ear a third time, which causes him to let go of my tail and swap my hand away. Only for him to go right back to holding onto my tail again. So, of course, I do the same action a fourth time, except this time I keep his ear held down to see how long it takes for him to stop me. I expected him to swat at me again, but instead he opens his eyes, and an amused expression on his face as he does. <sighs> let go of my ear. Sure, after you let go of my tail. His eyes slowly drift to where his hands are. It takes him a few seconds to process, but once he does, he smiles. Hmm. He lets go of my tail, and so in return, I let go of his ear. I'm too busy staring at the ear, still happy watching it bounce back into its usual position, that I don't even notice his hug coming until it's too late. Heck! I've got a Jeffrey! I lie there, unsure of what to do at first, but before realizing I should probably be hugging him back. Yeah, well, I've got a Ted! That you have. And he's hugging. As he's hugging me, he lays his head down on the pillow next to me, locking eyes with me. It's actually kind of nice. I'm not used to this. I suppose Jesse and I had intimate moments before, but this feels different. It feels more relaxing, like I can be fully at ease. Your eyes are blue. Yes. Yes, they are. Heh. <laughs> I've not actually paid attention until now. Wow. You like me, yet you didn't even notice what color my eyes were? Hey, it's not that bad of a thing, is it? I don't know. I feel like that's something you should know. Hmm. Ted closes his eyes rather than responding to the question, and I'm not quite sure why. What are you doing? Well, what color are my eyes? Huh? Why? I'm just curious if you're any better at this than me. Tell me my eye color. Uh... Crap, I don't actually remember. If I guess wrong, I'm going to look like a hypocrite. Uh, but 
Ah, they should have given us multiple choice. It's but blue. Ted now opens his eyes back up, a smug expression on his face. Fuck, I was wrong, wasn't I? <sighs> Green, looks like you suck at this too. <laughs> yeah, well, hmm. You're cute. Oh, he said oh. How do I reply to just oh? Yeah, what makes me cute? I don't know, you just are. Ted chuckles and sticks his tongue out at me, which only makes me feel even more bashful. I'm blushing. I'm pretty sure I'm blushing. I'm not even good, I'm not even doing good at flirting, but mm, he's not judging me for it at least. Yeah, <laughs> I like how you're the one getting flustered from calling me cute. W what? No, I'm not! Ted pokes, his no pokes my nose and sticks his tongue out at me, which only causes me to pick up my pillow and put it over my head to hide my face. Why is he so good at getting me this bashful? I can't even say anything now. Duh, you're hiding your face again. I grumble, unable to say anything coherent at this point. I'll be nice and stop teasing you so you can wake up. <laughs> I'm able to hear Ted as he gets off the bed, loudly yawning. Besides, I've got stuff to do today. I lower my pillow upon hearing that, curious as to what he says. Curious as to what he means. Ooh, excuse me, guys. Huh? What are you doing today? I'm hanging out with Marshall. He should be coming around this morning to pick me up. You are? Oh. Is something wrong? I feel a twinge of jealousy when he tells me this, which I immediately feel guilty about. I should be happy that he's spending time with more than just Darren and me. He's my friend, after all. <laughs> it's just like that. It's just like with Sean. I really hope I don't screw stuff up and say something dumb. Nah. You're making more friends. I'm happy for you. I force the words out, trying my best to not give off any sign that I'm feeling unreasonably upset. I can tell by Ted's expression that he isn't convinced, but I don't particularly want to talk about it either. It's a me issue. He doesn't. He shouldn't have to worry about me being dumb. You know, if you want, you can come with me. You sure? Yeah, I'll probably feel less nervous if you're there. What's there to be nervous about? I don't uh, really know him much, and I'm not the best at making and keeping friends. I'm worried I'll screw stuff up somehow. Hmm. I could go with him, or I could stay home. Ted is nice, but so is home. I'm going with him. I'll go with you. Woohoo! What are you guys planning on doing, anyway? Uh, no clue. He's got such a confident smile when he says it that reminds me of myself. It's what I do when I'm clueless, after all. Sounds like a fun plan. Hold up, guys. One second. Alright, sorry about that. Sounds like a fun plan. <laughs> Once we're both awake enough, we head out to the living room. So, when is Marshall coming to pick us up? He should be here any time now. He said he'd be here around ten. What time is it now? Um, there's a clock right beside you. Oh, right, I'm an idiot. I'm about to look at the clock to my right when Darren walks in. Morning. Ted waves at him, his hand lingering in the air, I bet, even after he's done, before finally lowering it. Hiya, Darren. Guessing you guys are waiting on Marshall. All right, we'll try to message me right now. Okay. Yeah, he did. He did say he'd be here at ten, right? Darren shrugs in response. Don't remember. You're the one who talked to him. When did you talk to him anyway? Who? You. Last night. Darren kept saying I should make more friends than just you two, and suggested I hang out with Marshall. He, uh, called him and handed the phone to me without even giving me a chance to figure out what to say. I let out a sigh when he says that. That definitely sounds like Darren. He did it to me a few days ago with Sean. It worked, didn't it? That's not the point. It feels awkward as hell to have someone throw you into a conversation you weren't prepared for. Eh, you can afford to be more social. I'm not too happy with how dismissive he's being about it, because it is something that bothers me, but I also don't know what to say, either. 
I feel like if I try to argue with him right now in front of Ted, I'll end up getting angry and cussing him out or something like that. I don't really want Ted to, Ted to see that side of me. Then again, I should, probably, I should probably work on avoiding stuff like that anyway, regardless of who's around to see it. Before I can dwell on it for too long, someone knocks at the door. Oh, I think that's Marshall! Ted wastes no time in scurrying off to the open door. Darren shortly follows. In the meantime, I make my way over to the couch to lie down, figuring Marshall will probably come in, have to come in for a while. I may as well claim my spot on the couch while I still can. Hi, Marshall. Hello, sir. Come on in. The three head back into the living room, and I wave at Marshall as soon as I see him. He waves back. Hi, Jeffrey. For a brief moment, I was worried he was about to call me by my real name instead of Jeffrey. I shouldn't have been worried, since he was doing a good job of remembering my new name in the last the last time we met up. At least I think he did. I can't remember. The worst that could have happened would have been him calling me Candle again, so I'm not sure why I was worried about it. Then again, I did get called by my real name in my dream last night, and maybe that's why I'm uneasy about it. Yo, Jeffrey. Should probably sit up and make room. I snap out of my thoughts and realize everyone else is still standing, and that Darren is right. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry. Nah, it's okay. You don't have to. I wasn't planning on staying for long. You sure? I have to get back home since I've got a package coming in today. I don't want to miss it. Well, my house is always open to you if you ever want to hang out or stay the night. Marshall nods, and I can hear his keys jingle in his jacket pocket as he goes to fish them out. Oh yeah, um, I invited Jeffrey. Is that okay? Marshall hesitates before answering, long enough for me to worry that something is wrong. How dare you invite one of my friends? W w was that wrong to do? Yes. I want to tell Ted that it's okay, and this is just Marshall's way of messing with him. But right now it's fun to watch, and I don't want to ruin his fun. Yeah, Ted, what were you thinking when you invited me? And now you can't take it back. I have to come along, and it's all your fault. Ha. Ha. At that moment, I'm pretty sure that Ted's picked up on the sarcasm. Marshall's sense of humor is odd, but it's still fun to play along for with from time to time. Oh no, whatever shall I do? I guess you'll just have to join us for ice cream now. Ice cream? <laughs> y yeah Ice cream sounds good. I'd rather have an actual meal, if that's okay, sir. And I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Fueled by Insanity. Don't forget to watch my other videos on Psychic Connections, Dawn Chorus, and Echo. Those are pretty popular. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!